So, hello everyone, a pleasant day to all. Today, we are going to discuss the characteristics of a good test or the criteria for constructing a good test. Now, in doing assessment, this is the third step. But what are the first and the second step? The first step is, of course, the first step there is going back to your learning objectives. What does it mean? The objectives that you have used in the lesson plan and you have used in teaching is the same objective that you will use in assessment. Once na nakuha mo na ulit yung dating objectives when you were starting the lesson or during the construction of your lesson plan, the next part is you have to construct your table of specification. Now, once you have constructed your table of specification, you have now the idea as to what type of test you are going to construct. And in constructing those test items, you have to follow rules. And you have to follow the guidelines or criteria in constructing a good test. There are lots of criteria in constructing a good test. No matter what the test item is, no matter what the type is, ito yung characteristics na dapat na meron ng test ninyo. Pero ang pinaka-importante sa lahat ng criteria na iyon, maliban sa clarity of the learning objectives, um, fairness, practicality, and efficiency, ang pinaka-importante ay reliability and validity. The most important uh, criteria in uh, measuring the characteristics of a good test are validity and reliability. Meaning, test items or the test itself has to be valid and reliable. Now, the question is this. When do we say that the test is valid and a test is reliable? I will repeat. When do we say that the test is valid and reliable? I give you the definition. A valid test means that it could measure what it is supposed to measure. Ibig sabihin, kaya niyang sukatin yung dapat niyang sukatin. Ano ba yung dapat niyang sukatin? Yung criteria. A valid test is actually a test which could really measure if the improvements needed to be given to the students based on your objectives are really met. Yung bang mga improvements na kinakailangan ma-acquire, yung skills na kinakailangan ma-acquire ng estudyante mo na nakabase dun sa balangkas ng objectives mo o lining mo sa pagtuturo na reach ba o na meet ba ng mga estudyante mo yun yung tinatawag na validity. Ang reliability naman, ito bang test na ito ay may internal consistency. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Kapag ipinatest ko ba ito o ibinigay ko ng sampung beses, dalawang pung beses sa same group of students, are they going to arrive to almost the same score? Ibig sabihin, if one took the test ten times, ang score niya ay hindi nalalayo sa unang score niya na 85. Maaaring naging 83, maaaring naging 86, but still, hindi nalalayo doon sa score na yun. That is what we mean by internal consistency. Now, let's um, explain it further. I-clarify pa natin siya. Magbigay tayo ng halimbawa, chismis. Pag kami naririnig tayong chismis, karaniwan mo nang maririnig sa mga tao ang sasabi nila, reliable ba yung source mo? Valid ba yung informasyon mo? Anong ibig sabihin pag sinabi, reliable ba yung informasyon mo? O valid ba yung informasyon mo? Diyan sa chismis na yan. Kapag sinabi, ay nakita ko si Ana, buntis si Ana. At sinabi na, reliable ba yung information mo? Ibig sabihin nun, sa sampung taong sinabihan, nung impormasyon na butis si Ana, pare-pareho yung impormasyon na nakuha nila. Ibig sabihin, consistent yung sinabi ng source sa sampung tao na yun. Dahil inulit-ulit nung tao na yun, yung statement niya at pare-pareho lang yung sinabi niya dun sa sampung tao na yun, yung information ay reliable. Ibig sabihin, consistent. Okay? Ngayon, kapag sinabi naman natin valid, anong ibig sabihin nun? Ang ibig sabihin ng isang informasyon na valid ay factual siya o totoo. Okay? Tatanungin natin. Kapag ba consistent yung informasyon na sinasabi natin at paulit-ulit na sinasabi natin, 
yung statement na yun, kahit na sampung tao pa, kwenting tao pa, o kahit ilang tao pa yung makausap natin, ibig bang sabihin nun, yung sinasabi natin ay right o totoo? Okay? So, ang answer doon ay hindi. So, ibig sabihin nun, paulit-ulit na pagsasabi, reliable, pero yung totoo, yung factual, valid. So, it means that hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon that when we are consistent with what we say, we are telling the truth. Okay? We are factual. So, it means that a reliable test is not automatically a valid test. Ibig sabihin, even if the scores of the students are consistent with the number of times he will take the test or he took the test, it doesn't mean that it is valid. It may be reliable but it is not valid. But remember, when something is true, you will be consistent. Ibig sabihin, if you are stating facts and you are stating the truth, it will always be consistent. Truths are consistent. So, ibig sabihin din nun, a valid test is a reliable test. Okay? A valid test is a reliable test, but a reliable test is not automatically a valid test. So, when you are going to measure the reliability of the test and the reliability is good, it doesn't mean that you will not be measuring the validity. You still have to measure the validity of the test. Once you measure the validity, you may not anymore compute for reliability. Okay? So now, we are going to discuss the different types of validity and the methods of computing the reliability of a test. So let's go first with the different types of validity. We have four types. We have phase. We have content. We have criterion, and the other one is construct. Okay? So what are the four types of validity? First, we have phase. Next, content. We have criterion, and the last one is we have construct. The first one is phase validity. When do we say that a test has phase validity? Phase refers to the physical appearance of the test. How does the test look like? Of course, it will be referring to the test paper with all the um, items in there. With all the, the test paper itself will be examined and it has to pass phase validity. When do we say that the test has phase validity? First, if it is readable. It is free from grammatical error. It could really be fully understood by your student in terms of instruction. Okay? What else? Malinaw yung photocopy or printing ng test. Kung hinandritan man ni teacher ang test items, naiintindihan yung penmanship ng teacher. The spacing is correct. Just right, there is right spacing. Hindi sobrang dikit-dikit. Hindi naman sobrang lalaki ng font size. The font color should be something which is readable. Hindi red, hindi green, hindi yellow. Pero yung sapat lang para hindi sumakit ang mata ng mga estudyante mo. And of course, one of the most important part of base validity is the arrangement of the item. The item has to be arranged from easy to difficult. Maybe aside from those uh, physical appearance of the test, your teachers may ask you about other phase validity that you might think of, which are very important when you construct test items. Okay? So again, that's phase validity. That's the physical appearance of the test. The next one is content validity. Okay? Since this is content, it would be, re it would be referring now to the uh, to what is inside the test paper. It's not just the physical, but it's the content. So, ano yung content na yun? First, unang-una natin dapat consider when it comes to content validity, are the tests, are the tests congruent or relevant to all of the test objectives? Yung pang test na yun ay ginawa base dun sa objectives na nasa lesson plan 
or yung objectives na nasa table of specification. Ito yung magiging problema eh. Automatically, kapag hindi kinuha ni teacher yung objective na nasa lesson plan at gumawa siya ng bagong objectives doon sa table of specification, automatically, violated si validity. Anong klase yung validity? Content. At dahil may content, uh, may problems ka with content validity, automatically, hindi maipapasa ng mga estudyante mo ang test na yan. Okay? What else? There would be cases that teachers will be using the objectives in the lesson plan, but when he taught the lesson, he did not use the objectives in teaching the lesson. So, parang ganito yun. Ito yung lesson plan, nasa papel, tapos nung tapos nung nagpuno si teacher, iba yung itinuro niya, iba yung naging topic, pero syempre, pag gumawa ka kasi ng table of specification, automatically that it has to follow your lesson plan. Sinunod niya yung lesson plan. So, meaning nagkaroon ng gap dun sa teaching. Automatically, there's no content. There's no content validity. Kasi, the idea there is, the way you taught your student has to be based on the objectives of the lesson plan. And the way you taught your student is the way you train them. So, the way you train them has to be the way of testing them also. Meaning, you do assessment based on your training. Kasi yun yung training mo sa kanila. So, kung analysis yung training mo sa kanila, then magpa-test ka ng analysis. But when you taught them, and your only manner of teaching is just to explain or to define everything, all of the lesson, then do not expect them to be trained in analytical thinking. Then because they will not be able to analyze. So there will again be problem with content validity. Okay? There has to be congruence. The lesson objective, the way you will talk, and the way you will ask questions. Consistent you at the middle. That is content validity. Okay? Pwede rin naman na iba yung topic na itinuro, minsan ang biyayari iba yung lesson na itinuro, iba yung pinatest. Not unless, nireconstruct naman lang ng teacher. Yung iba kasing mga estudyante, akala hindi na ituro yun. But the truth is, the teachers just reconstructed the wordings in the book. They did not encourage memorization, so there had been reconstruction, re rephrasing of the words. So yung iba, akala nila hindi na ituro yun, pero na ituro naman. But the topic is really not taught. Really not taught totally. Then, there will be problem with content value. At kaya tayo gumagawa ng table of specification. Ang reason kung bakit may table of specification para automatically save sa content value. Okay? Basta sinunod mo yung TOS mo, may face validity. Ay, sorry. Basta sinunod mo yung TOS mo, may content validity ang iyong test. Automatic yun. Dahil nasunod mo siya. Okay? Na, but nasunod mo siya, pero at the same time, yung din ang ginamit mo sa pagtuturo mo. Okay? Now, the next one is criterion validity. Criterion validity. When we say criterion validity, it is referring to the idea that your criteria kasi eh, may sinasabi tayo ng criteria. Okay? It is referring to the idea that this test could really measure an external aspect. Ibig sabihin ng external aspect, kapag ka kumamit ka ng ibang test at yung test na external na yun, kinumpara mo yung test na ginawa mo when you compare these two tests and they correlate to each other. There is criterion validity. Ulitin ko ha, pag sinabi natin criterion validity, there is a test and this test could measure a given criteria or could measure a given um, characteristics or a, another test, it is compared to that, then there will be criterion validity. And in criterion validity, we have two types. We have what we call predictive validity. while the other one is concurrent validity. Okay? Ano ba itong predictive validity at concurrent validity? Sabi natin pag criterion validity, um, we compare it uh, into something and we charge that 
this test could measure a specific ability or a specific characteristics, may it be throughout time or from the time being. So, pag sinabi natin, ang validity ay predictive, ibig sabihin nito, ibig sabihin nito, a test is constructed now, currently, there is a test which is constructed, and it correlates, the criteria of the test correlates to the future performance of the student. It could predict the future performance of the student. Example, we have constructed a certain ability test, and this ability test, we, were, we have tried to correlate it to the passing of the education students in ELJMC, the licensure examination in Michi. So, we have a test sa lahat ng areas, gen, gen and professional education and um, majorship, gumawa tayo ng test. Tapos, na-predict nitong test na ito yung mga batang makakapasa. Dahil sila yung nakapasa dito sa test na ginawa natin, sila din yung nakapasa after 4 years sa licensure examination for teaching. Then, we've computed for reliability or correlation. And we were able to find that they are correlated. So, meaning, itong test na ito ay may tinatawag na predictive validity. Kasi na-predict niya yung future performance ng mga bata. Okay? While, kapag sinabi yung concurrent validity, ang concurrent validity is the type of validity whereby a test is constructed 10 years ago, 5 years ago, but then, when this test, which was constructed long time ago, was used today, currently used, it resulted that it can still predict the same factor or the same ability which it had predicted before. Example, a mathematics test was constructed by the group of mathematics teachers 10 years ago in TLJMC. Then one of the faculty members found the test items and he tried to give the test to the students. And it was found out that it correlated the grades of your students. So meaning, the old test 10 years ago, 10 years ago, it was constructed, but it can still be used now. It's still valid to be used now. It can still measure the same ability that it measured before of the same degree. Then the test has concurrent value. Okay? Kahit humana siya, pwede pa siyang gamitin, valid pa siyang gamitin. That is what we call concurrent value. Okay? So, that's predictive and concurrent validity under criterion validity. Now, the last type of validity is construct validity. Now, when it comes to construct validity, we have two types. We have what we call divergent and convergent construct. When we say construct, it means factor, okay? Since this is factor, meaning it entails relationship. If the test is related to another test, or if the test which is intended to be given for a specific ability test could still be correlated as measure of another ability test, yun yung tinatawag natin na construct validity. At may dalawang tayong klase ng construct. Ang unang klase ng construct ay yung tinatawag natin na divergent construct. Pag sinabi natin divergent construct, factor ha, ulitin ko, construct is a factor. Meaning there is internal relationship among all of the test items. Dahil may internal relationship sila, kaya nilang i-measure ang isang ability. I, I believe your teachers have told you that group of interrelated competencies are ability. Group of interrelated skills are competencies. So, ang idea natin, nagiging factor siya, it is group of related competencies and it measures one skill. Ay, sorry, one ability. So, ganun ang construct. Ngayon, meron tayong tinatawag na divergent construct at convergent construct. Pag sinabi natin divergent, if you've watched the movie Divergent, he is said to be divergent because it's different. Naiiba siya sa lahat. So, ibig sabihin, 
kung ang isang test merong divergent construct na iiba siya sa lahat. Ibig sabihin, isa lang ang kaya niyang ability na i-measure. Example, a test is constructed and it is intended to construct, I think it is intended to measure logical, mathematical, ability, for instance. This test is said to be convergent or divergent. This test will be convergent because it could measure logic and mathematics. Okay? Pero, if this test can only measure logic, logical ability, and it cannot be used to measure mathematical ability, then this is a divergent test. Divergent construct. Bakit siya divergent construct? Yung factor niya, isa lang ang kaya i-measure. Logical ability. Ang convergent, kaya siya sinasabing convergent, nagko-converge siya. Ibig sabihin nun, pare-pareho sila. So dahil magkapareho sila, itong logical mathematical ability na ito is considered to be of the convergent construct. Pag more than one, ang ability na pwedeng i-measure, convergent. Pag isa lang at naiiba yung test na yun, divergent. Okay? Okay, so continue that. The next one is reliability. Now, for reliability, we will be discussing three methods, no? The first method is, ito siya, the split half method. Second is the test with test method. And the last one will be the parallel form or the equivalent form. So, what does it mean by this, no? When it comes to reliability, in invalidity, we measure it by tabular formation. No? There's a checklist and then you're gonna just determine whether it really passed the criteria of, of, of a test with phase validity and content validity because criteria and construct validity are for special kind of tests. Now, when it comes to reliability, there is an operation that we have to follow here. Okay? When we test, whether, when we check out whether the scores are consistent, we have to follow methods. Okay? Hindi naman kinakailangan sampung beses na ipalitis. Maaaring dalawang beses. So basta meron tayong mga methods na ginagamit. Okay. The first method is the split half method. So dahil tinawag siya na split half, ibig sabihin, hahatihin mo yung items, number of items ng test sa dalawa. Okay? So for instance, we have 100 item test. So hahatihin mo yung 100 item test na yun sa dalawa. So from one test, magiging dalawang test siya. Kapag ginamit mo ang split half method, hatiin sila sa dalawa. Ngayon ang tanong, sa papaanong paraan? Okay? Sipin niyo mabuti, papaano ko ba hahatiin yung 100 items na yun? Yung iba siguro sasabihin, 1 to 50 and 51 to 100. The truth is, hindi maaari yun sa split half method. Why? You have to remember and go back to the basics that test items are arranged from easy to difficult. So when you split the items, no matter how many items we have, we do the odd even splitting. Okay? Um, all of the odd numbers will be one test. So that's one, three, until 49. What, sorry, until 99. While the other half will be 2, 4, 6, until 100. Okay? And then, you're gonna give both tests to the students of yours. The, the, both, all of your students will be taking the splitted test items. And then from there, you are going to check their papers. Once you have checked their papers, you are going to compute for the reliability of the test using Pearson R, Spearman Rho, Cronbach Alpha, or other tests of reliability. So, paano mo siya ipaklag? Example, the student number one. Um, so, 100 items, in-split mo siya sa two, 
So, dito mo ilalagay yung scores niya sa ad items. Dito mo naman ilalagay yung scores niya sa event items. Example, sa lahat ng ad items, ang makuha niya ay 35. Tapos, sa lahat ng event items, ang makuha niya ay 38. Kasi, 100 siya, naging 50 at 50 lang. So, ganyan yung siya ipaplat. Si student number 2, sa ad items, sila nang nakuha niya. For instance, he got 26. Well, in the even items, he got 35. So, that's how we plot it. And so on and so forth. Ito yung table na ito, ito yung gagamitan mo ng formula para makita mo kung reliable ba siya or hindi siya reliable. Okay? Yan yung gagamitan natin ng formula. Maraming formula na pwede. You will learn that later on. Okay? So, that's split half method. Question, when do we choose to use the split half method. Okay? We choose split half method when there's time limit. Or sorry, there's time constraint. For example, for example, the finals na. Gusto mong malaman kung reliable ba yung final test na ikinanda mo sa mga estudyante. Hindi ka pwedeng magparitest. Kasi final exam nga eh nakauwi na sa kanila nilang mga probinsya o sa kanila nilang mga bayan yung mga estudyante mo. Hindi ka na po pwede pang magpalites. So, ano ang gagawin mo? Ang gagawin mo ay hahatiin mo na lang sa dalawa yung test na tinake nila para may result ka na talaga. At yun lang yung pinatawag natin na split half method. You will get all the odd and the even items. And their scores Okay? The next one is test retest method. Anong ibig sabihin ng test retest method? Kapag sinabi natin test retest method, there's the first time they took the test, there's a pre-test, and there's a post-test. Okay? Test one, first time they took the test, and then the last time they took the test. Pero ilang linggo ba yung pagitan? Ito rin yung hindi advisable kapag ka itong may time limit tayo. Kasi hindi mo po pwedeng gawin na nagpa-test ka last week, ipapalitest mo na kaagad this week. Hindi po pwedeng ganun. There's an ample amount of time. And usually, the minimum number of time is 3 weeks until the maximum is 1 month. It cannot be too early because they will still remember their answers in the previous exam. But it cannot be too late because they will forget all the things that they've learned from your lesson about the test if you are going to give it too late. So, ang, ang time limit natin is 3 to 1 month from the first test and to the pre-test. So, it's, it will just be the same. It will just be the same. You are just going to plot it this way. Okay? So, if there are 100 items now, so you will just place here the, okay, the test and the re-test. Okay? For instance, they got 85 on the, during the first time that they took the test and then the second time they got 9. We just plot it that way and so on and so forth. And then after you have plotted all, that's the point of time again that you are going to compute for reliability using the formula that are available. So, ano ba yung mga formula na yan? Sige, Pearson R, Puder Richardson, Spear Monroe, Cronbach Alpha, and others. Okay? So, yun yun. There is also one limitation of the test uh, of the split half method. Na kung kailan naman dapat ang gamitin mo ay si test and test when the item is too short, that it cannot be split up. Hindi yung hindi mo na pwedeng hatiin pa. Kasi short lang yung item na yun. So talagang ang kailangan yung gamitin ay test, retest. Pero kung paano man, kung talagang constraint sa time, pero short lang talaga yung test, at isang beses ko lang siya na iba, test, then it can be that you find the third method. Meaning, find a parallel form or find an equivalent form. Meaning, uh, an equivalent form of test is like this. Okay. You constructed a new test. This new test was 
uh, patterned after an old test, but you want to reconstruct the old test. So the same types of tests and the number of items in each type are relevant to the other test format. So ang kagawin mo, so nagiging parallel form na sila. Kung ang objective dito sa test 1A ay same din sa objective ng old test dun sa test 1A niya, hanggang sa dulo, may congruent sila, then ang tawag natin dun ay parallel form or equivalent form. So, pwede mo siya, dahil parallel form siya or equivalent form, pwede mo siyang sabay na ibigay sa mga estudyante. Hindi mo nakakailangan maghintay ka ng matagal na time. Okay? So, ganun lang din. Ang mangyayari, you just, you just have to place there yung old test, yung score nila doon, and then the new constructed test for validation. Then you plot the scores of your students in the first test, the old test, and then the new one that you have constructed, then you compute for reliability again. That's what we call parallel or equivalent form. Okay? So those are the methods of testing the reliability and the types of validity. For our next lesson, we are going to discuss item analysis and validation. We'll be computing for the difficulty and discrimination index. Thank you so much.